All right, all right. Hello, welcome everyone to this week Training Tuesday, where magnet marketers, our goal is always to help you become a magnet with your marketing versus being a bullhorn. Today, we're gonna help you build out a workflow. If you haven't built one already for your brand, we're gonna walk through the step-by-step -step process that you can use to create your own workflow. And we'll talk about why that's beneficial here in a moment. But before we dive in, just a quick introduction to myself and my awesome co-host. My co-host is Mike Gingrich. He's the president of Digital Hill, the founder of Tabsite, Woftio, and a published author extraordinaire. You'll learn a lot more about him today and what he likes to do and his skill sets, as well as myself. If we have not met before, hello, I'm Jessica Phillips with Now Marketing Group and the Relationship Marketing System. As we get started, I'm going to share this out and let my awesome co-host do the starting. How's it hey going, guys. Mike? Hey, it's, uh, it's good to be here, and we want to kind of dive in today talking about a, um, I, I think, just a critically important topic, and that's, um, you know, kind of walking through the uh, lead nurture process and um, talking about, you know, workflows in this. Uh, it, I mean, things need to be broken down to a step-by-step -step process, and um, I think that too many businesses think about that they, they kind of leave off with hey we're doing some social media or hey we got our website up and so those should be working for us right um, but to to really make them perform for you to see benefits to see results uh, you, you need to have a process that people walk through it's an integrated process because as we talk about with magnet marketing you know it, it's a, it's a multi-step process to have a company uh, discover you to to know you to like you to trust you and so that takes multiple touch points and that, that has to be a, a strategy and the strategy is broken down into a workflow and the workflow is basically steps practical steps that you can uh, dive into and that's what we want to kind of you know discuss today and and uh, go into in more detail so um, obviously with um, now marketing groups background with um, HubSpot certified uh, that's what you know that, that's a foundation that HubSpot's about you lead nurture and um, I come at it from the, the uh, my book standpoint game plan for social media lead generation where I kind of talk about a, a process in there too so it's it's a strategy and strategy needs to be broken down to workflow that's what we're going to dive into Absolutely. And that's a good way of explaining it. Just like anything in business, I mean, there's a step-by-step -step, you know, process that you go through in order to get things accomplished. So it's just putting a plan and a strategy, like you said, a workflow in place for your content to help turn the leads that are coming in, qualifying them for you, and turning them into sales. So you're spending your time on leads that are a little bit more warm and nurtured versus just someone maybe that's just visiting your site browsing. It's allowing some of the sales processes to be automated for you during this time when you're spending your time wiser, uh, working with the people that are maybe ready to buy. They say that 60% of the sales cycle is over before someone even talks to a sales rep. What are they doing during this time? Hopefully in one of your workflows and checking out your content. Um, and not only just for new leads, but it's also a great way of keeping your existing clients and customers because they're staying top of mind with you in a relationship and a, in a way that you're able to connect with them long term. Yep. So. Hopefully we sold you on the idea of having a workflow. Now it's time to create one. So talking through each step-by-step -step process, um, just a heads up, I'm going to share a link. And um, just real quick, welcome, Kathy. Thanks for joining us uh, or joining with us today. Good to see you as always in here. Um, but just a heads up, I'm going to share a link so you will have access to follow along if you'd like um, with this swipe copy that literally gives you like the step-by-step -step, um, how you would build this out for your brand. And then um, you can reference it as you go to set, set up your workflow. And it's just something we even use here in-house because there's, there are some steps as you're getting it created where it could be easy to forget one. Um, and the last thing that you want automated is something that's broken. So you wanna make sure you, you know, cross those T's, dot those I's and get it all kind of set up in a systematic way. So then you have it ready to nurture your leads. So. Yes, yep. All right, so the first part of creating your workflow is first knowing who you're creating it for. <laughs> Before you even get started on that, who are you creating and what are you trying to 
solve um, or help them reach in this workflow. Um, so a great way of thinking about this is knowing your ideal audience, your buyer personas. Let's just say you're targeting, um, let's just say we're going to use um, uh, agency, for example. Let's just say we're targeting um, a president of a company and their top pain point is growing leads using social media. So we know who our persona is. We would drill down to him more specifically and think, okay, what is going to be valuable enough that he is going to want to submit his name and email address at the minimum in order in exchange to get this information? So you first have to think, what can I give away that's a good gift? you know, a good, a good enough gift that they're going to feel that they've got some kind of value, extreme value out of this exchange um, that you're providing. So that's step one. Yes, yes. Step two. And, don't, and don't um, overlook that, you know, kind of thing. And, and it's the right balance because um, you're not giving away the farm. You're not giving away the product, you know, your, your, your service, mm -hmm. that type of thing. But you're doing something of enough value that they're motivated to want to partake of that opportunity. Absolutely. Yes. So definitely you want that. And I just shared this link in here. Welcome, Christian. Thanks for joining as well. Um, here's a link to get to that PDF. But now you can follow along with us as well. Okay, so once you know what your offer is, then you have to create, of course, that offer. What is that going to be? What is going to be that value-added piece that you want to start off with? You do not want to start off with something that's going to come off salesy at all. You want to make sure this is freely giving of good information where you are giving them something that you've spent some time in um, and on, and it's super valuable. Like Mike said, do not overlook that point create that offer, and then you wanna start building out your workflow. So here's the step-by-step, -step, and you can follow along with the sheet and the link that's attached. The first thing is you need a clear and concise headline. Giving them clear, simple instructions of what this download is going to provide. And this, in my opinion, is the hardest thing that you're gonna create is your headline because you have to be concise in what you're saying that you're giving them that's helping them reach a goal or solve a pain point. Very simply put, uh, just a very simple, concise headline right there. Yep, I'm gonna give you one just as an example then. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, free download, grab your 2017 Digital Marketing Checklist Guide to maximize your online web and social marketing. So, you know, that's what you need to do. This is what it is. This is what it's about. That was the mm -hmm. attempt there. Love it. So then right there, that's a good, clear headline. Five to eight words is perfect. The next thing that you want to do is have your body copy. So then you're going to break it down a step further, Mike, and say, okay, what's included in this? Three to four sentences, what's included in that offer? Yep. And, and, and basically, these are kind of the, the value adding points. This is, uh, this is why they want to continue. This is uh, something that they're going to you know, directly benefit from. This is what they're going to get. So that's, that's the, you know, the, the, the copy that is um, enticing. And, and again, um, what they're going to discover uh, is another way of saying what they're going to learn and uh, why it's going to be valuable to them. What problem is it going to solve? What's it going to address that is relevant to them? Absolutely. The next thing is three to five bullet points to spell it out because all of us like to take the, the easy way sometimes. We don't like to always read the paragraph text. Some people do, but we want the bullets. So definitely draw out some of the things that are going to be in that guide that you're going to be covering that they would find beneficial. So you pull it out like, hey, I'm going to give you the dimensions for everything you need on social media templates, like using Mike's example, or I'm going to, you know, help you know when to schedule your post or whatever he's giving away that are those nuggets hidden in that guide that this person is going to definitely want. Make sure you match up what is exciting in there with what they're trying to achieve and what would be important for them to know that's included. Entice them a little bit more. Um, with that. Yep. And the reason you're doing bullet points again, um, I mean, web copy, uh, because people are skimming, uh, people are on mobile devices, number two, and, uh, they, they need to get to it quickly. I mean, it's going to be a pretty good chance the, you know, one in two chance or more that they're going to be on a mobile device. So you, they want to be able to Absolutely. quickly easily see it. And when you're on a mobile device, you probably don't want to read large blocks of text. 
Absolutely. Or long, long, long. Remember the old sales copy things? And there's like buy now in between. Oh my God. I'm like, does it end? Just tell me how much it is and where I sign up. Yes. <laughs> I was already sold, but I can't figure out how to buy it. I'm out. Uh, then from there, now that you've told them what's in this offer, you need to have some form fields of what you're going to require in exchange for you giving them this guide. Now, here is very tempting. I know it's very, very tempting to ask them for everything. Their home address, you know, their favorite foods, everything. You don't want to do that. You just want to get the bare bones basic information first because you're starting off this relationship. You don't want to be too pushy. You just want their name, their email address, and potentially their company name so you can learn a little bit more about them. Depending on your industry, you might have another question, but get that super valuable information right out of the gate for your form fields, but you just want a few at the beginning. You do want to plan ahead, however, and think of some additional form fields. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about this as we drill down in here, but it's queued up questions that you would want to ask should they move on because this, this workflow, and I'll share my screen in a moment if we need, but this workflow, once they complete one workflow, they're going to be redirected to the next one in order to keep moving them through the sales process, right? So you wanna make sure that not only you have your questions there, but some questions that would be queued up after they fill those out. So maybe now we know their name, their email and their company name, but now I wanna know what's their role at the company or what would best describe them? And maybe it's, I lead an organization, I'm ahead of the marketing team, or I'm an agency or whatever those the persona like endings, how you would describe someone very succinctly, you can put that in there as a queued up question. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you have those already kind of planned out ahead of time. It'll help you when you're creating this as the workflow when it's set up on online. Okay, from there, you want to have your um, knowing, you already know who this is for, you wanna la label it at the top um, as you're building this out. We always draw ours out in, on paper and digitally, so we know who the persona is for because we wanna know how to segment based on how they fill out. Then we wanna make sure that we already have our graphics ready for the page. Mike, you probably have some good points on like where the graphics should go and like side by side or how this should look, especially with the mobile. What are your yeah, thoughts on Yeah, that? no, I mean, I think that, um, Again, your landing page needs to the the graphic should capture attention. I think that again, you probably don't want to have too much text copy. Don't err on the side of uh, adding too much text to the image. I think that um, you know uh, images that are have some some lifestyle effect in them. People can be warm, that type of thing, engaging. All depends mm -hmm. on what, exactly what your product is, but um, um, we're we're taking a look at images largely that can that can work well on the mobile device and also work well on social media. So, you know, things that um, think of a landing page and a kind of a bare minimum for a good Facebook post mm -hmm. would be at least 600 pixels wide, 315 pixels tall kind of thing. And uh, so again, the height is, we're not talking, um, notice that my my height was less than my width. And I think that's mm -hmm. key because we don't want them just looking at an image. I'm thinking of a mobile device. You don't want a that the, the image to take up their full screen. You want them to be able to, to mm -hmm. see past that. It's supposed to help the process, um, not hinder it or not be the process kind of thing. So that's what's exactly. important um, in an image to 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 heighten it, to capture it. Not too much text um, and not too not too tall. Um, and I kind of, you know, work within those, those parameters, something that I could easily share. I always kind of come back to a Facebook post. Would this work well in a Facebook post? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if they like it, they're going to be sharing it on to their network. And definitely those are pages that you'd want shared. Um, one thing I didn't mention on here is one thing that's recommended on landing pages as you get into it is that you remove all other navigation actually besides the social media icons and things like that. And of course the logo to get back to the homepage. They said, you know, to kind of keep them there and move them through the process. Sometimes it's recommended and encouraged that you actually remove the other navigation at the top of your screen. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So simple as possible. Uh, it's, yeah, it's simple. So it keeps them there and lets them know, hey, I want you to fill out this form real quick. 
Um, so once you have your, your call to action graphic as well, so the call to action graphic is a little bit different than the landing page graphic. It's the button that actually gets them to the landing page. So you want to make sure using Mike's advice as well, that you have a graphic that's either text, it can be text without an image, um, but it clearly is going to stand out on your website somewhere, whether that's a sidebar, whether that's in the content itself, or you can have a couple of them. Uh, usually at the and in blogs, people put it at the end, sometimes they put it in the middle, but make sure you have some call to action graphics created, which is the button that somebody would click on in order to get them to the landing page into the workflow. So you wanna make sure that that's, down, that's designed. Then you have your download that's designed, of course, and then once they click and fill out the form, they're directed to a mic. The landing page, right? We're, we're already moving you. on to the landing yeah, page. Yeah, the thank you page, there. yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yes, and so that's where we wanna make sure. Now, now, because this is, this is a um, mistake that I think people make at times, and that is they say, check your email. Yeah. And, and they don't put it on the page, right? That drives so, me crazy. I, I mean, and what are, what are the odds that all that email yeah. is going to get through to me and it's going to get through in a timely fashion so I can get caught in some filter or something like that. Uh -huh. So um, I like to see, I like that, that to be right there in front of me uh, where I can access the content, the download, whatever on that thank you page. So, you know, the headline is a, a thanks, thank you for downloading. And then the body copy is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, clear and concise, including that hyperlink to the download. I usually like to make the the download almost a button, you know, it's like a, the button is download, you know, it's, it's yeah, dead exactly. simple. It's, it's right there in front of them. Here it is, you know, and, and that's mm -hmm. it. So that and instead of just a text link uh, within the copy, here's your, here's your link kind of thing. Um, that's the method I like to use there. And, um, you know, basically I, I'll, you know, invite them to download it. And then, you know, then you kind of want to walk them into the next call to action perhaps. Absolutely. So it's still okay to send them the email, of course, for that offer. You want it to be in their inbox, but you also want to give it to them, like Mike said, on the screen. They're already there. They already did their, their part, so give it to them, you know, on the next screen. And it's also your way when you're giving it to them to download where you're inviting them to say, hey, if you liked this, you're going to love this. So maybe I've given you the free guide, as Mike mentioned, to, you know, digital marketing. He's given you this guide. It's got all kinds of good stuff in it. But the next step is here's a free webinar training on how to set up your your social media content calendar or a free content calendar for your social media. So something complimentary for that persona that you're going to give them in addition, that's going to now be a trust builder piece of content. So the first one was all about value. You're giving, giving, giving away, or somebody's going to be like, man, this is good stuff. I can't believe they're giving this stuff away. I would pay for it. It's so good. You want them to think that they would pay for it. It would be so good. Uh, that's how you know that you've really got a good offer. The next one is the trust builder though. So they have to know you a little bit and it has to be something that's related to your process a little bit or your company to where they've liked your other content. They're gonna trust you enough to get into this content because this content is that intermediary. It's the second meeting where you're, you're giving them your style and your approach and you want them to start learning to trust you a little bit more. So from there, you give them, you repeat this process, right, that we just talked about, and then you take them to the actual, what we call, hand raise offer, which is, hey, I would like to get a quote from you for social media, digital marketing, or hey, I would like to request a quote, or whatever that looks like for your brand. They can jump ahead to that. So if they've already sold on the first one, they can jump ahead, of course, that button's still there, but you need to entice them in a little bit more ask a few more of those questions so you know if you're still targeting the right person and then drive them into this process. Yep. Now, I think that common common gaps, common gap points are that uh, mm -hmm. people um, stop after the first call to action and mm -hmm. uh, don't don't think of that next one there that's the trust yeah. building one, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, or else they rush too much to the sell one kind of thing like that. Mm -hmm. So So we're talking about can, that um, that that journey that is helpful to, to lead someone through. You're still giving them access to to move ahead, but we're mm -hmm. not want to make sure that we don't skip and and miss that um, opportunity to mm -hmm. take that next step and assume that, that one thing did it. Yeah, because they may not even know that you are the solution to the problem that they're having yet. 
they're understanding this as they read your content and as you're giving them so much value that they're realizing, oh man, I don't have this all figured out. Oh, I do need to hire this person for this thing. So they may not even have put pinpointed that their pain is related to what you are offering as a solution. They may not have connected those dots yet. You can still have a request a quote or get a you know offer or whatever on your website and your in your main menu or wherever on the site. They can jump to that once they've discovered that. But until then, let's nurture them in uh, into this workflow. Another part of this workflow is setting up those emails then. So if they do stop at download one, like you mentioned, you are sending that very first guide back as promised into their inbox with the second offer at the bottom of that. But then you are then after that, continuingly to drip some gradual emails out to them that are still value valuable and related to what they've downloaded, whatever their workflow was. So like, for example, if they downloaded for the social media guide, you may not want to start hitting them with, um, you know, if you're selling affiliate links or something, right? Or teaching affiliate marketing, it may be too much out of context yet for them to put those two together that they're all related to online marketing, even though it could be from the same company. So you want to make sure you still stay in line with what that lane is that they're going down. Yep. Um, so it's all related. Yep. Okay. Do you care if I show my screen? I'll show you this visually as I well. Think it's real quick. Let's do it. Okay. Let me do this real quick. Let me know when you can see. Maybe. Uh, Should be coming. Sharing. Help helps if I click the start sharing piece of this. It's loading. Okay, there it is. You can see it? Okay, great. Yep. Okay. So if I were, let me bring this out a little bit more. Okay. So for this is how I visualize the workflow, just to kind of put it out there and I can, I'll attach this as well in the notes. But if you think of this as your button, so this is your call to action button that lives somewhere. They're going to click this button. This is the value added offer. They're going to be redirected to this landing page where it has the form, their, your copy, the image, all that. They're going to hit submit and they're going to be taken to a thank you page, but they're also sent this thank you email. And you want to plan out what blogs they should receive if they're still in step one. Okay. What emails or blogs, whatever, that they should receive if they're still in step one of this process. If they've moved on to step two, which is the trust builder content, that is your offer again. It's the, the call to action button that's here, taking them to the landing page. They hit the submit form. They're taking, given a thank you um, page and a follow-up email. And then these sets of emails are delivered to them. From there, then you're taken to the hand raise, which would be the um, landing page again, the thank you page, and then the follow-up um, which is going to just be like, here's, here's our steps from there. And then you still want to keep nurturing them though, even if they've filled out to request a quote or whatever. So it really helps when you can visualize it this way with both this and that other um, landing page to write everything out because you know who it's for. You can put your, your name, your persona name here and map everything out. We actually fill in all these blanks, make sure we have everything. We map it out. And then we decide on the tool and everything that we're going to use in order to create this. Because if they start filling out this question here and the next questions are lined up, so let's just go through one together real quick. So let me actually, um, I'll do one on our site real quick. So if we went to our website, I'm just going to cheat and go to the resource center so you can get this guide here and I wanted to get this landing page workflow, I would click on, um, if it loads while well. I'm running so many things. Okay. If I wanted to download this, I'm gonna be brought to the, the page, the text, all that. Now I've already filled this out before. That's why it's only asking for my email because I filled this out a million times. <laughs> but if you go there, it's gonna ask you, a couple questions, right? And you would hit submit. It's going to then take you to the page to get that offer, the download here, like Mike said, and then invite you to the next step. So here, if I click this, then I'm going to be taken to the step two, and then I'm going to be asked another series of questions. I'll click download, get that offer, 
and then I'm taken to the next step. Because of how I filled out the form, it's actually taking me to a different step. But then you can, you know, get your your guide both here online and then also in your email right there. Okay, let me stop. There was. That was the journey, right. and, and I think that um, I, I like that visual though, just because it kind of um, that that's the that's the the workflow, that's the breaking down of the strategy, you know, into the components and what the, each of those components need. And um, I mean, yeah, there's you know, we didn't go into what the copy in each of the emails or whatever you you, you mentioned that briefly, but yeah, but, uh, and but it's it's helping them. Um, now we can go into a few more details too, because we we talked about yeah. if on the on the thank you page on the first one, if let's say that, you know, in, in addition to that second call to action uh, there, well, th there's the p potential that you can um, do that in one of those emails in that first series as well to make sure, you know, mm -hmm. to, to also uh, give them some content. You're giving them some, some content, but one of the pieces at the end of one of those can also be to direct them. You're just watching the different channels or where they're clicking and, and mm -hmm. you know, and what that is. But so there's, there's, don't think that um, if they don't opt in on that, that first thank you page to the second option, the trust builder that you've missed it or something like that. There's that you still have that other first sequence going of emails that uh, is, mm -hmm. should be helpful to you along the way. Absolutely. And there's some tools that you would need in order to like filter and change out like what workflow that they're entering into based on how they answer it. So it's, it has to have a capability of the, if this, then that statements in there. However, you can build out workflows with free tools. Um, if you're just getting started and you maybe want to collect some email addresses before you invest and get some sales before you invest in a software that's going to have a price tag with it, right? So there are some tools out there. I mean, JotForm, there's some things that are built right into your website. Uh, in most cases, if you're using like a, a CRM, like a, or a, I'm sorry, if you're using um, a content management system like WordPress or something like that, um, there are some tools that you can get that are built in. Um, Inbound Now used to have one that was free um, that you can plug into WordPress as well. But, I mean, you get what you pay for, yes. But you can get started with some of the free tools if you need to and you just want to kind of prove this to yourself that this is going to work for me, right, to test out before you invest in some software. From there, then if you want to get a little bit more sophisticated with it, that's when you would double down and maybe purchase another tool. There's several of them out there um, yep. that will help you do the if this then that statements. But the things that I find that are often, um, like you said, that kind of can be pitfalls or whatever to avoid would be one, making sure that you have the whole process mapped out. Have some people test it. You don't want to send the wrong email or broken links or not have it on the page, you know, test it out, test it out frequently, uh, have somebody else test it out. Cause sometimes when you stare at something long enough, you see things that aren't really, really there. <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, uh, uh, so test it out and then just go back to it and update it, refresh it. You know, if, especially if one's not converting, we had one that we were swore was going to be a great and it was not, it did not perform well the, um, the way that we thought. So we had to change it up. So, you know, look at it, take a look at it, and change this up in your process as you need to in order to make sure that the leads are coming in. But yeah. Yep, absolutely. And and I think that um, you know, it's it's a it's a journey. Oh, I got my phone ringing. Sorry, I can't hear that, but uh, it's distracting me. <laughs> um, what was I saying? That um, you're getting a bunch of leads calling you in from your workflows that you have set up. Yeah, you know, I mean, but this is oh, this is <laughs> this was my point. Yeah, gosh, I'm back to it. All right, so <laughs> you know, uh, your your business may be open eight to five, but this is your 24 seven. You know, so this exactly. is this is that opportunity to to reach them later on. Someone's um, on their phone, they're doing some research nine o'clock at night. You know, they're uh, dual screening mm -hmm. something, but they're taking a look at some things and. You know, and, and so this is your opportunity to have a way to interact with them, you know, when when you're not at the office, when, when they can't call you, walk in, that type of thing. So that's what uh, this journey is about, is meeting people, giving them an opportunity to connect with you 24-7, where they're at, what they're doing, and, and still kind of walk them through that process just the way you would – uh, think of that process naturally of, you know, if, if someone stopped in and they said they had a question about such and such and, you know, do you offer that? 
you know, what would you do for them? Mm -hmm. You know, how, how would you walk them around, you know, your, your business, your store to show them, you know, what that is. That's kind of this process. So, you know, I, I was in a retail store recently and, um, obviously I asked a question and they said, Oh, well, let me take you over here and I'll show you this. And, you know, so we, we showed me that, but now thinking through these kind of call to actions, this was like, they prompted me with another question, you know, well, do you ever do this? And it was kind of related. It was in the same mm -hmm. vein. Yeah. Uh, well, yes, I do. Well, let me show you this. Mm -hmm. And so then we went over there. So that was, that was, you know, that was them moving me mm -hmm. onto the next step and, and, you know, kind of building yeah. trust because, oh, they're understanding me. Oh yes. You know, they, I, you know, I do these things and they're thinking through that and, and they got me over here. And so that's, mm -hmm. that's the in-store journey. We're trying to take that online to walk people down that path. Absolutely. You would do that in any sales process, right? When they're telling you something else, you're like, oh, you do that? Are you, this is for you? Then yeah, absolutely. That's a really good example of how you do that. So and you're right. It's 24 seven. It's never closed. And this is a great opportunity for you to be able to push something out on social that's able to convert, that doesn't feel salesy, that you're just giving away a good offer. So it could be part of that 10 for one that we talk about a lot on here of sharing out your content the one, your soft lead-in for a sales post could be one of your downloaded offers that you're giving in exchange for something. So they feel like there's something in it for them uh, before you're trying to sell them on something. Um, you know, just play around with it though. See what's right for your brand um, and what kind of downloads would work good and, and some of the things you're asked for. I mean, one of the ones for like one of our clients was literally like tech data sheets and spec sheets for projects that, for municipalities. And it's just something he's given out all the time, but he never thought to put it as a download. Um, people would have to email him for it. So now that's been one of the things that he's used to convert more of his leads into prospects and sales, just by giving something away that he was already gonna give away anyway, but now he's turned it into a download. Yep. In yep. a workflow. There we go. All right. So cool. um, any questions out there? Cheval, thanks for joining mm -hmm. us. I see you made it in. Hi, and uh, I'm just trying to think, see if there was anything that we didn't cover. I think um, we covered that realm there. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to put some the other link so you can start yeah. building this out too if you guys have questions. And then if you have a workflow, you know, for your brand and Mike, um, I know you have some good downloads too. Put the links in there so we can look at uh, what other people are doing. Sometimes we can get some good ideas from what we've seen others doing. I know, Mike, you have a good um, tool, Waftio, that will help up people in as well um, to, to some different things. So that might be an opportunity as well to use that and creatively to get people to opt in as well. Yeah, yeah well. like Waftio is kind of like um, the, mm -hmm. it's like a, you know, floating landing page, so to speak. So it's that, it's that quick uh, pop-up mm -hmm. type opt-in offer that so you're not directing people to a landing page you're 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 coming in front of them right where they're at if they're on a blog post or something like mm -hmm. that so uh, yeah. the same type of concept they can opt in right there and you know then um they're, they're into that process yep yeah and we use that for um one of our clients so wellness weekly and it's just literally his newsletter granted the newsletter, if they're opting in there first, it's not necessarily the workflow. However, you have to remember, if they're opting into any piece of your content, your content that you're sending to their inbox can have that call to action in it. So it could start them on the path of getting into your downloads a little bit deeper and helping to convert them. So look at that at how you're, you know, sending out your blogs even or your newsletter, whatever that may be. So it might be a good tool to check out and see how you can integrate. Absolutely. Boom, and 30 minutes rolls by, doesn't it? <laughs> See, inbound's not hard. We didn't have to have everybody watch eight hours of HubSpot videos. It wasn't, it wasn't the eight hours, no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. If you have questions and you've watched the replay or you're watching us live, please let us know. We'll give you a link to how you can get connected to us uh, directly in the notes or in the comments right here, depending on where you're watching. Well, we are magnet marketers. Our goal is always to help you become a magnet with your marketing versus being a bullhorn. Thank you so much for joining in with us today. We'll be here right back next Tuesday, Eastern Standard Time, 4 p.m., uh, right on Facebook Live. And I did get our event set up on our Facebook page. Super excited for that. It's planned out all the way for the next year. So whoop, whoop. There Here's the Facebook events changing. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Mike, for your time. Thank you all again for watching. Thanks, folks. Take care. See you, Jessica. <laughs> See ya.